Good afternoon and nearly good evening to all of you. Thanks for coming back. I hope you had an insightful summit so far. I hope you learned a lot about the great use cases that we have, the great AWS services, and how you built your journey to the cloud. Now, before I get started, earlier we handed out to you this little passport where you can collect stems with the booths. Now, there was one additional passcode, which was for the closing keynote. So on my next slides, I have that code. And I'm going to tell you what it is right now, but I want you to look out for it so you know what the passcode is when you hand it back. Now, it's the amount of machine learning services that we have. And it's going to show up in the next slides, the amount of machine learning services. Now, I wanted to close up by really having a look at emerging technologies and how things are changing and how we start to innovate at hyperscale thanks to things like AWS, thanks to cloud computing, and thanks to the great technological advancements that we're making. No matter if that's self-driving cars, voice assistants, personalized experiences, intelligent manufacturing, virtual and augmented reality, biometric identities, there's a lot of advancements that are being made in the genomic space, Personalized medication, 3D printing of medication, how cool is that? Computer-assisted health diagnosis, fraud detection, all the way to robotic fulfillment. And today I want to talk about these different areas and showcase a variety of our partners and customers that are building against our platforms in these technologies. But if we think about computer systems, about services, about platforms that we're building, what is really changing is the fact that we become more human-centric. Not too long ago, we had to know the exact syntax that we type into a command line to interact with a computer system. Then along came graphical user interfaces. Then along came touch screens and tablets and phones. And nowadays, it's already normal to talk to smart speakers. I can talk to a computer system. Moving forward, it will be very natural to talk to computer systems pretty much everywhere, and they will recognize us and interact with us more normally. Now, what is driving that more human-centric experience? Well, pretty much the fact that we now have hyperscale in data that we are collecting, and information that we're collecting, no matter if it's IoT data analytics that we're producing and driving insights out of that. Why? Because compute is readily available. Services around machine learning and artificial intelligence are ready to be readily available and accessible for anyone to use. And so if we talk about innovation, there's one aspect that's really important. Innovation is not something that just magically happens. Innovation is not a goal that we put somewhere and say, I'm innovating, and then I reach it, and I'm like, I'm done. I innovated. No, it's a continuous, ongoing process. And to do that effectively, you need to set yourself up and your company up in a manner that you can lower the cost of experimentation allow individuals within your organization to try things out. AWS has a plethora of services that can help you in so many different ways. And if you start experimenting with them, you can start innovating. As a matter of fact, I said a plethora of services in so many different areas. The broadest and deepest platforms for today's builders, no matter if it's machine learning services, IoT services, blockchain, mobile services, core services such as some compute, storage, databases, where you heard earlier this morning where we continuously are innovating in this space. Infrastructure services, migration services. So it's about experimenting with these services. And so one of the things that we ran over the past weeks, and also specifically yesterday, we had a competition going on in our expo hall. It was the AWS Hack Days, where we tried to hack for good. And I brought a little video with me to show you what the Act Days is all about before we look at who won the competition yesterday. So let's roll the video. We have a lot of problems in this world that we can solve using technology. We want to solve it because the broken road actually often leads to road accident and impacting not only the drivers but also the vehicles. With your help, we are here together to create an impact, to totally change the entire world.
AWS Sec Days 2019. It was really exciting. We ran the competition yesterday in the expo hall right there. Eight hours to hack away. And sometimes it's really hard to hack in a very short period of time. But it's also exciting to see what we can build in such a short period of time around computer vision, given the technologies that we have at hand now, together with Intel and AWS. So it's my absolute pleasure to announce the winner today from the competition. And the winner of the AWS Hack Days 2019 is Team Astro. Team Astro with their project Park Smartly. Team Astro, please come on up. Team Astro has won this competition. Team Astro yesterday built a wonderful application that allows us to run more securely using computer vision. Congratulations, congratulations, I pass the check. Congratulations, Team Astro. Let's send by for a quick picture here. Now. All right, thank you very much, thank you very much. Now they built a wonderful application that allows us to use computer vision on CCTV cameras to make places, public places, safer using machine learning to identify threats and recognize them. How cool is that? Now, this competition about AWS Hack Days was around four different areas. You saw it in the video. Health tech, fintech, agritech, and smart cities. And so I figured I want to talk to you today about these areas and the innovative experiences that both the teams have built, but also what our broader customers and partner ecosystem is building in this area. So let's start off with health tech. And if we think about healthcare, Healthcare today is kind of that subjective, highly variable clinical care. I fall sick, I go see a doctor, and we, we analyze what is happening to me right now. I have reactive medicine, I fall sick first, and I get treated. Moving forward, I would predict in the next 10 years, we see an evolution in the healthcare space. Why? Because we now have the ability to measure biometrics much better, have distributed platforms that allow us to pass it on, and have consistent, reliable, and best practices clinical care. Data analytics and machine learning will drive this to a point where we can start looking in proactive, personalized medication. And when I say AI and ML will drive this, it will drive it multifold. It will allow us to get better insights into healthcare, but it will also allow us to lower the cost of healthcare. I want to give you a few examples of what's happening here. Let's start off with Arteris, a wonderful company that builds on top of AWS to perform cardiac visualization. It's an AI assistant that looks at your MRI and analyzes it and helps doctors to actually render scans multi-dimensional models and better diagnose your patients for cardiovascular diseases. And when I say you lower the cost, this AI assistant allows us to render those MRI scans that by industry standards took 90 minutes, bring that down to 10 minutes. Faster, better, and more cost effective. And the same thing happens, for example, with ultrasound. Butterfly Networks makes ultrasound exams much more accessible. They have a handheld ultrasound system that runs a cloud-based data analytics platform behind it. You make now medical imaging universally accessible because they have an AI and a deep learning model that allows little to no trained users to operate the device, but then interpret the captured device by looking at it and using computer vision to understand what's happening and make consistent measurements on your ultrasound scans. We actually had one of the teams that participated in the AWS Hack Days, Samaritan from Singapore, that took it one step further and say, could we maybe build a voice assistant for clinical observations? Sometimes when doctors operate, they can't really type or write while they're assessing the patients, but you still want to capture the information of what you're seeing. For example, if I'm an endoscopist, as I do the endoscopy, I want to take notes. So they used Amazon Transcribe and Amazon Comprehend Medical, our natural language processing service specifically for medical, to transcribe the conversation that the doctor has as he performs the observation. Now, some of you, if you're like me, might have some dental implants. As a kid, I didn't brush my teeth well enough. We should brush it every day. Now, if we don't do that, sometimes our teeth have problems. As such, we need to receive dental implants. 
Now, dental implants can be quite costly. Why? Well, if you put a dental implant together, somebody needs to manually design that tooth before you actually implant it. So how can we lower the cost there? And so one of our American customers came up with a really great idea, Glideval Laboratories. They use AI to help bring down the cost of those dental implants, specifically crowns here. They produce about 80,000 over unique parts every week. And these parts, these dental implants, have micron accuracy when you design them. Micron, that's a thousand of one millimeter. That's how accurate these teeth need to be so that they sit properly on your tooth and don't fall out. And so they said, well, look, that was traditionally done manually. Could we bring down the cost by using artificial intelligence and specifically deep learning? And what they did, they said, let's use a neural network but one specific technique, they use a generative adversarial network, a GAN, to automatically render a dental implant. Now, if you haven't heard of GAN, a generative adversarial network, it's actually neural networks that are kind of pitted against each other to create or dream up a new image. There's some interesting research that has been used here in the past that allows you to dream up complete sceneries or images, or in this, from one of the research papers that came out, allows you to render different things together and dream up different animals or different kind of scenarios. Now, they took that idea and said, well, if I can render up an image with a GAN, could I do the same with an implant? And so they applied that technology. And basically, as you need that dental implant, they will have a look at your teeth. And they use a device to actually have a 3D scan of your tooth. And after you have that 3D, 3D scan of your tooth, they send it to that neural network. The GAN will then try to understand it and create, render the best possible tooth crown that you can have so that you can implement them on top of it. Now, there's a manual review of it, but it dramatically lowers the time required to perform this. Similarly, if we look at diabetic patients, Diabetes is a real problem. If you have diabetes, what you need to do is you need to measure your blood sugar every single day, sometimes within hourly intervals. And how do you do it currently? Well, you actually need to pinch your finger, stab it, take a blood sample, and measure how much sugar you have in your blood. Now, that's neither very nice, plus it's costly. These strips cost, and they're not reusable. So one of our hack day teams came up with the idea of building something called what they called glucometer. Blood measurements made easier. There's a research that has been performed on the amount of exhaled carbon monoxide. So as you breathe out, you look at the carbon monoxide levels that you have. And they allows us, that allows us to predict glucose levels. And so this team prototyped the glucometer by taking a Wemos microcontroller and a carbon monoxide sensor. They integrated it with AWS IoT and built a little application around it that would allow you to actually exhale and measure your blood sugar levels. Again, built with AWS services, prototyped in very short periods of time. And similarly, another team has thought about, well, depression is a real problem. Mental health, how do we go about it? One of the things that would be nice would be, what if we're happier? What if we smile more? And they said, well, what if we encourage people to be happier about it? And so our team, Dal Yu from Vietnam, they created a little application where they said, well, how can we encourage smiling? Because smiling releases endorphins and serotonin. And that reduces the aspect of loneliness, which generally creates depression, or is one of the factors that can contribute to depression, and it counteracts stress. And so they proposed a solution where you gamify the experience to encourage and remind people to smile more. And the way they look at your smiles and actually provide you a smile score was done using Amazon recognition, because it comes with facial analysis, and that includes the smiles that you have. Again, great things that you can build in very little time. Another team from Thailand, Sunday morning, thought about, well, how can we automate x-rays? The interpretation that we have, right? If we have an x-ray, we actually need to understand it. What's going on? Is it, is it healthy? Is the healthy chest? 
and they want to speed up the clinical analysis and help patients understand these exams also better. And so they came up with the idea of actually classifying the chest x-ray using computer vision. And they built models on top of Amazon SageMaker to understand, is your current x-ray of your lung healthy, or is there a problem? And there are other customers out there that actually took that one step further. GE Healthcare does something similar. They use computer vision to understand your x-rays and see if there are critical conditions that need immediate attention. This is really important because you don't always have a radiologist available if you go into an emergency room. Sometimes there's waiting time. But what if you have a real urgent conditions, such as a pneumothorax? If you don't act on it immediately, you might have your patients pass away within short periods of time. And so their piece of software, their AI computer vision model here, helps detect these conditions so that you can take immediate uh, attention to it and prioritize that patient. But there's one challenge that comes with computer vision, which is you need a lot of computational power. Now, cloud computing allows us to train models effectively and cost-effectively at large scale. But still, when we take that model and we push it out onto the devices that we now operate in the hospitals and the clinics, we need to run it on that piece of hardware. So if we can actually reduce the computational power that is required to run that computer vision model, we can reduce the cost of that hardware, and as such, we can reduce the cost of analyzing that x-ray. And so GE Healthcare went ahead and said, how about we use reinforcement learning for something more interesting than just making cars drive around? How about we drive down the cost of neural networks? And so they run reinforcement learnings to actually perform a neural network compression. Take a neural network and find a way to restructure it, compress it, while keeping more or less the same accuracy on the prediction of that neural network. And running that reinforcement learning model allowed them to reduce the neural network that they used to perform this computer vision analysis by 40%, 40% smaller with less than 2% accuracy loss. So we reduced the cost dramatically. Again, machine learning improving machine learning. How cool is that? Driving down the cost of healthcare. And even now here in the region, you might have heard of HaloDoc in Indonesia. The idea is here is how can we simplify the access to healthcare? How can I provide tele teleconsultation with healthcare professionals? If I live in Indonesia, there are sometimes remote islands, I might need to travel far to actually see a doctor. Well, if I can have an immediate assessment on my mobile phone to at least know is there something urgent that I need to have or that I need to have looked at, you can do that teleconsultation. And maybe your doctor now prescribes you pharmaceuticals, medications. You can now have them delivered across 30 cities in Indonesia via the help of HaloDoc. You purchase it, and you have them delivered by Gojek to your doorstep. A great way to lower the cost of healthcare, simplify it, and accelerate the access to healthcare as such. They currently have 22,000 doctors and 1,200 pharmacies in their partner network and run on AWS. Now, let's have a look at FinTech. One of the challenges that I sometimes have is, you know, I have these this thick vault wallet here. You know. Actually, it's not that big, but I like, I like to go around with small wallets. Now, this wallet has a lot of credit cards. Wouldn't it be nice if I can reduce that? And so there's a startup that builds an AWS that came up with this idea of how can I simplify your finances? It's a startup called Curve, and they allow you to have one secure Curve MasterCard that basically contains all your existing credit cards. So you have one card, no number in it, so I can't copy it easily, and it contains all your credit cards. But apart from the convenience, which is one nice aspect of reducing my wallet size, what is way more important is you get real-time alerts on any spend that you have on that credit card immediately through your app. And they actually use data analytics to classify all your spend and render it back to you in a nice interface so that you understand what you're spending money on that you understand what is your budget, where should I reduce cost that I'm spending something on. Again, simplifying the experience, allowing people to control their budgets a lot better and easier. Now, if we talk about financial service industry, one of the things that we have there is the financial regulators that say, hey, if you sign up a customer, 
you need to understand who your customer is. You need to verify that customer. Very often referred to as KYC, know your customer. And part of that is verification of documents. Now, we want to make up the sign-up process of signing up for a bank account or credit card easier. We digitally transform it to mobile applications and web applications, but we can't take away the capabilities of assessing if a document is valid. Now, does that mean I need to go physically to a branch location? What if it's one of these banks that don't have branch locations? Some of the startup banks nowadays are completely digital. So how do you do it? Well, you allow people to actually upload documents, ID documents, and verify it if it's the person that you're actually looking at in your mobile application. Now, that verification requires biometric analysis of a face and a document. Now, to simplify that, you have companies such as Onfido, which is a startup company that builds on top of AWS that allows anyone to actually perform identity verification on government-issued documents and then perform biometric analysis. So you get a smile at the camera, it records you, and based on that biometric analysis and things that you perform, it can identify, is this document valid, uses machine learning under the hood, and understands if it's also the person that we're actually looking at, simplifying greatly the way we actually verify people. Also here in the region, we're looking at financial inclusion. One of the challenges in ASEAN is that a lot of people might not have credit cards. A lot of individuals are not even banked. They don't have a bank account. And if you don't have that, you can't get access to credit. And credit is something really important. Sometimes I need to finance something. And so the Indonesian startup company called FinXL works on financial inclusion. They actually created one application called Credivo. And it gives their customers instant credit financing for e-commerce purchases or personal loans. And how do they do that? They need to make real-time decisions. But how do you do that? How do you know if someone is credit worthy? Well, they use data analytics and machine learning models, advanced data analytics models to understand then what is the credit score of that person, what is the right amount of credit that I can safely and securely provide to that individual. And financial services should really be available to everyone out there. Right. And FinXL is on a mission to really make that work, not only in Indonesia, but across Southeast Asia and, and broad ambitions beyond that. Whoever has a mobile phone now can get access to this. And a startup here in Singapore, NAP, thought about, you know, insurance is a really important thing. In many different parts of our lives, if we're not insured, we have an issue. But we don't always think about insurance. And companies don't always make it easy for us to purchase insurance. And so they thought about it and they said, you know, could we make it easier for any company out there to integrate insurance products via just an API call? And so that's exactly what NAP is doing. They provide APIs to insurance products. Think about it. If you are an online platform that allows your customer, like a travel agency, to purchase flight tickets, you can now use NAP to provide travel insurance as an insurance product integrated in your application just via an API call. That greatly facilitates the way we actually provide insurance to our customers. Now, let's talk a little bit about smart cities. And I'm going to zoom out, zoom out far out of this room and go all the way into space. In space, we have plenty of satellites roaming around. And those satellites look at our world down here. And there's lots of information that comes out of there, lots of satellite imagery. As a matter of fact, as part of the AWS Open Dataset Initiative, a lot of satellite providers actually provide you open access to that satellite imagery. But we also have a customer called Digital Globe, and they went ahead and said, hey, you know, satellite imagery is nice to have, but we actually need to interpret what we're seeing. And so they build a cloud-based platform on top of AWS to derive insights on that satellite imagery. And they use computer vision and machine learning models, specifically deep learning models also, to render that satellite imagery into actual meaningful insights that you have. And just to give you an idea of the size that we're talking about here, they generate 80 terabytes worth of data every single day. That's a lot of data that you need to crunch through of your machine learning models. But why do they do that? Because this platform allows their customer to use it to solve certain problems. They have customers that map out villages in Africa using the machine learning analysis on that satellite imagery to say, what's the right amount of vaccines that I need to deliver in those remote locations? 
They provide access to first responders with information during a national disaster. As it happens, you can understand, how do I respond to this? Or it's even used in the telecommunication space, and these are just one of the many examples of how the customers of Digital Globe are using this, such as PSMA Australia, which takes 200 terabyte worth of imagery on the 7.6 million kilometer, square kilometers of, of Australia to map out the 20 million buildings that they have there to understand how do I do proper 5G deployment? Where do I need to put the antennas to have the right amount of network here? Again, dramatically lowering the cost and giving customers, their customers, capabilities to understand satellite imagery better. Again, AI machine learning right here, really useful. Now, what's this? This looks funky. Any guess? It's a camera. It's a camera called Cubic by a company called GridSmart, which is one of the Amazon partners, uh, part of the APN partner network. Now, this bell-shaped camera, you can hang it on any intersection within your cities within your villages. And it allows you to record data on everything that's happening on that traffic intersection using computer vision. So far, they classified more than 43 billion vehicles around the world across 1,200 cities. And why do you do that? Because if you know what's going on in your traffic intersection, you can control the traffic lightning. And as such, you can control your traffic better, reduce the amount of traffic jams. As a matter of fact, Thailand's Ministry of Transportation took this grid smart technology, deployed it in Bangkok, and just by deploying this and changing the traffic lights based on the insights that they're getting here, it resulted in a reduction of delays of up to 24%. That's a great improvement by just hanging that around. And our team parked smartly from Malaysia actually thought about that too during the hack day, and they said, how about how about reducing the parking hassle, right? In Kuala Lumpur, sometimes I drive into a shopping mall, there's no parking space available. Could I reserve it? And they quickly build an application on top of AWS to find and reserve parking spots. And they used live parking location, AWS IoT, as a mechanism to understand which slots are available and push them back into the application so that I can reserve them, book them, get a QR code, and drive in. What's this? Looks like a smartphone, right? Well, it's kind of like a smartphone, but it has a big camera in front of it. Why is that? Well, this is an interesting product, because this product you use in the police force, for example. What you do with it is you put it in your vest. And why do you do that? Well, because this company utility that produces it, this body-worn tech that they're producing, it helps officers to be more safe. It recognizes what's going on using live video streaming that comes back in your cloud environment and reports and alerts based on things that are happening. Is there a gunshot? Is there an officer down? Do I see a threat coming up to me? And it sends that video footage and analyzes it securely back into AWS storage, wirelessly offloads it, making the lives of police officers more safe and allowing for faster response time, making your city safer and as such also smarter. And one of our teams during the hack days from Indonesia, patrons thought about that same idea, and they said, hey, you know, how can I make my city safer? How can I provide a messaging platform to report crime via channels such as Facebook for anyone out there to report crime and take immediate actions upon it? And they took it one step further, and they said, hey, you know, we got CCTV cameras hanging around. Can we assess live video feeds and reports using computer vision of what's going on. If there's a threat as it is happening, we can map it out, understand it, notify the right kind of authorities straight away. And they used Amazon recognition video to do that video feed analysis to detect crime or known criminals using facial recognition. Now let's talk about the last part, agriculture, and the interesting things that are happening in agri-tech, agricultural technological advancements. Interesting things are happening there. Robotic farming. How cool is that? What you see here is a robot that has a camera, and it's using computer vision to understand the crop. In this scenario, it's actually strawberries, and looks at it and understands how much water do I need to spray on these strawberries so that they grow well. And if they're ripe, I can notify for a pickup of that strawberry. Greatly reduces the cost of actually doing farming, 
And greatly reduces, much more importantly, the amount of food wastage that we're having. Food wastage is a real problem. Food supplies is something that can run out. And as we grow this planet here with billions worth of population, we need to think about sustainable ways to actually produce food, farm food effectively, and reduce the amount of waste that we're producing. Computer vision, AI, machine learning, robotics, all helps here. And if we look, take a broader view here, and we look at agriculture and its history of innovation, you know, not too long ago, we thought about how can we mechanize the way we farm. Instead of manually going around on the field, we mechanized it. We came up with trucks and tractors. There's the space of genetically modified crops to think about, you know, how can I grow certain fruits and vegetables better? As a matter of fact, right here in ASEAN, in the Philippines, there's IRI, the International Research Rice Institute that uses genomics to understand how can I farm rice more sustainably and better. And they actually even publish that genomics analysis through our AWS Open Dataset platform. And it goes all the way to self-guided equipment. And I'm going to show you a few examples of that in a little bit. And why do we have self-guided equipment? Because we can farm better, we can understand better, we can we increase the yield of the crops that we're having. And how do we do that? Data analytics, IoT predictive agriculture, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. So how do we bring that into that field over there? How do we make that existing tractor that we have smarter? Well, there are companies that are looking into that and trying to solve it. And what you see here is a device that you can plug into your farming equipment, such as, for example, this tractor. And what this device does, which, by the way, is called farm mobile PUC, it streams geotech data and information on a second-by-second -second basis from your farm equipment into an intelligent cloud environment, top of AWS. This module that you see here is actually 4G and LT ready, uses cellular to actually transmit that data back into your AWS environment, into the farm mobile environment, which runs on AWS. Now, why do I do that? because now I can get intelligence on what I'm doing. I can plan the way I farm. I can render my yield. I can understand the information of what's, what does my soil look like? Is it raining? Map it out with weather data. Do I need to water something? Do I need to churn things around? Do I uh, need to use mechanisms to farm better here? And that farm mobile PUC collects data from farmer machines by the second across that, all that platform. And not only allows it, uh, it allows the farmers to be more intelligent about how they're farming, they actually thought about a scenario on, well, how do you take it one step further? And if you think about, you know, a farmer produces crop, there's a yield, we, we take it, we sell it through a certain network, it gets financed to financing institution, and eventually it lands in our supermarket. There are lots of independent entities that are in that process and that are involved in that a great example where blockchain could be an interesting application. If I can get sensor information data from that field as it happens, from your farm as it happens, and make it available to anyone within that process, right, and allow the farmer to maybe sell that data for someone to understand what's going on and improve it, then that greatly improves the entire process. They actually created a platform where you can take this, what they call EFRs, electronic field records, and sell that data from their fields to third parties to make better decisions. This is in the US, but you know, ASEAN is a great place because this doesn't just happen in the US. It happens also right here in ASEAN, in Indonesia. In Indonesia, we have a great customer called Howard Token, and they think about how can we use blockchain for social impact. They started off by farming. They have a, br a, a broader vision on where they want to bring it next. But they started with farming and they said, you know, how can we help farmers in Indonesia get the right kind of credit, allowing them to grow the crop and get paid the right amount for the crop that they're yielding out of their farms? And with a lot of untrusted parties in the past, in between, that does, hasn't always helped the situation. So they thought about it, can we use blockchain to give the farmer, to, to become the farmer become a data provider? He can provide the amount of information, what do I have on the farm, what am I yielding, and he receives loyalty token for sharing that data. 
They then have data qualifiers, independent data qualifiers, other people that go to the farm, sometimes very remote locations in Indonesia, and verify what is the farmer doing? Is that actually the data that is, he's providing? Is it correct? Right? So they can do it without an IoT device. They have a manual independent verification now. Now, how do we make sure that it's correct? Blockchain, right? Immutable records that are cryptographically verifiable, and that allows data buyers, such as banks now, to get access to near real-time valuable data to understand which farmer should I finance correctly and help, or what is the crop that I can buy from. So lots of things happening in this space. And if we look across the different areas that I talked about, one of the things that's really important is we need to have the ability to really develop and experiment in a very agile manner. And if we do that effectively, and if you attend the Tech Fest earlier or the summit earlier, we talked a lot about how to do that using AWS, you can drive innovation within your company. And a lot of technological components affect our daily lives already. We talked about data, IoT, getting insights out of it, artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain. All of this drives innovation. But most importantly, it actually drives down the cost of healthcare. It drives down the cost of agriculture, reduces the amount of waste that we have. It revolutionizes the way we think about financial service institutions, how we get credits and have financial inclusion, all the way to making our city smarter and safer. And if we talk about artificial intelligence and machine learning, it was something that was not accessible to everyone in the past, if we just look a few decades ago. At AWS, we have a mission, and that's really to democratize the access to that technology, including AIML and many of the others that I talked about today. So go out there, look at the great services that are available, set your organization up for success, experiment with these new technologies, and think about it, how you can make the world a better place. So thank you very much for your attention. We're going to roll a video next. Thank you.